a dark rift opened. Ultimate evil crept into the world, starting an era of decline and chaos. The Shrining. Hey y'all, this is Vanguard here. I'm going to be taking you through the Burning Range deck that I played in the Masters Championship, which honestly was a little bit of a late addition. I wasn't even planning on playing in Masters. I had plans on Saturday and they fell through at the last minute. I had to whip together three Conquest decks and I, I pulled this one a little bit out of my hat. Um, I'd been tinkering with it for a couple weeks, really ever since folks in the forums were going off on how terrible Burning Rage is. And it, it's not nearly as strong as it used to be, but I had this idea that it, it still provided a lot of value, wanted to put a deck together that showcased it, happened to decide to, to run it in the Masters and got fortunate that uh, ended up winning the whole thing. So yeah, we're gonna start with the card that runs the whole deck, Burning Rage. Ever since the change, uh, Burning Rage hasn't seen a lot of play in the meta, and that's because the card's not as strong as it previously was. But it still works in the right sort of deck, uh, and if you're willing to accept a little bit of RNG or a little bit of randomness, which I was in Masters because uh, I didn't feel like I was as skilled as some of the other players, so introducing a little bit of variability or randomness into the game wasn't going to work against me. It was probably going to work for me in the best case scenarios. So yeah, this entire deck is based around this card, and the idea here is uh, to take advantage of Burning Rage's ability to essentially play Rage actions for free. Uh, we're going to be negating, hopefully, the two damage that the card is going to do to us. And uh, so you've got a deck that's just stacked with Rage action cards that are geared towards creature removal, uh, and then a few ways to finish off your opponent. So we're playing four copies of Burning Rage. It's the central part of the deck, and it's the thing that we are looking for in our starting hand every single time. Uh, now to the hero. You can play around with different heroes for this one, but I like Coronas. Uh, Coronas in particular for two reasons. First, because of Burning Rage, we're going to need some life game mechanisms, and the Soul Ravens give us an option to regain life. Second, because we're going to need to play Dominion, because this deck is going to feature a, a good number of slaves, uh, and Coronas among the, the Rage and Dominion heroes. Uh, offers us the opportunity to uh, basically put tokens on the board that are going to mitigate some of the problems that we run into with slaves and not being able to activate them. Uh, there, are, there are a decent number of times when that extra soul raven is going to be the difference between activating your tortured orcs or not activating your tortured orcs. All right, so now uh, on through, let's look at the, the suite of removal spells here first. So starting with the single aspects, Blood Frenzy. Uh, Blood Frenzy is not the best Burning Rage target. This is probably the worst card to hit in the game with Burning Rage, or in this deck to hit with Burning Rage, but it's excellent to have in hand, and particularly when you have a strong board, this will often operate as a full board clear. For two mana, it's an easy inclusion. We've got four of them here. Uh, second one is Fireball. If you watch the stream of my matchups in the Masters, I think the Fuzz mentioned how lucky I was to hit Fireball off Burning Rage uh, on my first turn. It's actually not a great first turn hit for Burning Rage. You're going to be able to do three damage to your opponent, but you're going to take two yourself. Uh, you want to save your Fireballs for later in the game, either play them out of hand, or if you're going to hit them off Burning Rage, you'd prefer to do that when your opponent has a board. Uh, the next removal spell, Fire Blast. This one is central to the deck for a couple reasons. Uh, it's usually strong to hit off Burning Rage. You do need to be careful though, because unlike the other removal spells in the deck, uh, this one can target your own creatures and you don't want to be forced into a situation where you're fire blasting your own board. Uh, but this card also can serve to activate your tortured orcs. In the event that you end up in a situation where you've got a whole bunch of tortured orcs on the board and don't really have a way to uh, quell the, sl the slave rebellion, a, a simple fire blast will activate your entire board and can be a pretty funny way to win a game. Uh, Force Labor is the next activation uh, off Burning Rage. This isn't a removal spell. It's the only activation off Burning Rage that's not a removal spell. But this is the central source of board presence in the deck. Uh, your ideal opener is to hit Burning Rage uh, with your two drop, maybe uh, off the spark 
if you're playing second, and then to hit forced labor immediately. If you get that, then it's going to be very, very hard for your opponent to recover. Uh, even if you don't hit forced labor early on, though, you're still aiming to hit forced labor anytime that you have board advantage. Uh, this is a, a target card for Burning Rage, and you're trying to manipulate Divine Offering to make it happen. Uh, the rest of the removal suite here, we've got four cannonades, uh, another simple removal spell, almost always good to hit off Burning Rage, and uh, won't activate if your opponent doesn't have a board. And then two Dragonfire. You could probably play with one or two more if you wanted to, um, or you could play without this. Uh, I teched it for Masters, just assuming that I was going to run into a lot of Hermel Hermelian Priests. Okay, so those are the cards that you're going to hit off Burning Rage. If you count them, you're going to have three blood, or, yeah, three blood Frenzies here, four Fireballs, four Fire Blasts, four Forest Slavers, four Cannonades, and two Dragon Fires. It means that basically a third of your deck is cards that hit off Burning Rage, which might seem like pretty random and bad odds, but by manipulating Divine Offering, by manipulating when you choose to go up a level, when you choose to draw a card, and by manipulating the use of some of your cards that reshuffle your whole deck, in any given turn, you should have two, three, and sometimes four opportunities to change the top card of your deck. And with those odds, you're going to have a decent chance on any given turn of hitting a spell or getting a spell on the top of your deck that will allow you to activate Burning Rage. The advantage of Burning Rage also is that by seeing the top card on your deck, you can manipulate your draw to draw the sort of cards that you want in your hand, into your hand. So let's look at the creature suite here. We're running just a few. Uh, one drops Lizard Barbarian. I'm running Lizard Barbarian instead of Goblin Warrior because um, of the two health difference here. Like the two health is going to help with Blood Frenzy. It's going to help if you need to use Fire Blast to activate your own board. Uh, next, we're looking at Goblin Fireworker. Any of the other two drops could work. You could think about replacing this with Tortured Orcs. Uh, I like using Fireworker because of the artifact suite removal, helpful against Hermelian, and also because uh, it's better to have a non-slave card in your two-drop slot because sometimes you're going to be able to activate your board just off creatures. That's also why we're running Gibo and Roni. Uh, this is not great if you need to fire blast your own board. It's not great, obviously, against Mutant, but it is good in terms of mitigating the Slave Rebellion. If you hit a turn two Tortured Orc, if you played a turn one Lizard Barbarian, you could come with a turn three Gibo and Roni, and you've pretty much won the game at that point. Uh, and then you're looking at the Dominion creatures here. So in this version that I'm showing you right now, we're running four Champion of the Revolt. In the version that I ran in Masters, I ran three Champions and one Vampirism. You could play around with that and determine what works best for you. I was running Vampirism in Masters because I was worried that I might fall behind on board and find myself in longer games and need some life gain to come back. Uh, I would say most of the time I run this deck with three ch or with four champions. We are only, though, running one slave for the champions to search for or tutor for, and that's Raging Minotaur. You really only need one of these, and if you run more than one, you're at real risk between this and Burning Rage of killing yourself, which you don't want to do. You do want to have the one, though, uh, to take advantage of the draw tech uh, uh, factor of the Champion of the Revolt. Uh, and because in some games you're looking for a quick win, and the Raging Minotaur is going to do that for you. In terms of the Shrines, uh, we're running 18 Shrines in this deck. You could bring it up to 19 if you wanted to. We're looking at uh, your typical Rage Shrines, Dominion Shrines, and then Cathedrals. Um, the Cathedrals are there mainly for life gain, because in this deck, you're running a couple mechanisms that are going to cost you life, and you, particularly the Coronis Hero Power, Burning Rage, and possibly your um, your uh, torch or your Raging Minotaur. And so you need some life gain mechanisms as well. Cathedral is one of those. Other options to include in the deck, you could look at including a. Uh, uh, a mutant or two or four. I sometimes run this deck with four mutants. I uh, didn't run four mutants in Masters because I wanted the mutants for my Nature Dominion aggro deck. 
so I took them out and replaced it with more removal spells for Burning Rage. But you could run it with mutants. I've done that before. I've run it with slave gladiators before. I think the current version without them is probably the strongest version, but there are arguments for including them as well. So let's talk about this deck a little bit. Like this was very specifically designed to be used in masters or in fun tournaments. I would not play this on ladder or and don't play it on ladder very often. Uh, you'll see that I'm not playing it on ladder right now. Uh, it's going to be very good against aggro decks or against decks, mid-range decks that are attempting to maintain a board of a lot of small creatures. So against hate bears, it tends to be relatively good. If you can get your removal going early against Kayanu, a Grand Reunion, it's going to be strong, tends to be strong against uh, the, uh, the Nature Dominion aggro decks and lists that are out there right now. This deck is not good uh, against uh, control lists because essentially almost all of the removal suite and the creature removal that you're playing is going to be useless against aggro lists, or sorry, against control lists. So in the Masters final, I banned uh, Cruel Tech's uh, Dragon One Turn Kill specifically because I was pretty concerned that this deck was just going to have no chance against it. Uh, and I didn't play the Burning Rage deck against his Shamans list. Uh, I ended up losing anyway with Priests to his Shamans. Uh, he got me pretty good there. But uh, Burning Rage would just be awful against Shamans, uh, and you would be in bad shape most of the time. And in general, anybody that's going to be able to control you with minimal board presence, something like One Turn Heal, something like uh, any sort of Wisdom Dominion control shell, this Burning Rage list is not going to play well against it. But it is going to do well against anyone who's not expecting it, against anyone who's trying to build a strong board presence. And really, the two main strategies for this deck are, first, you need to get Burning Rage out early, and you need to manipulate your draws, your levels, your divine offerings, and your shrines to maximize the use of Burning Rage every single turn. And then second, you want to aim to maintain board advantage at all times. You're in trouble if you start to fall behind on board. You do have a lot of removal spells, but in general, the deck is going to work best if you're able to handle any board presence that your opponent is trying to establish as quickly as possible. Um, so that's why uh, if you're not able to hit Burning Rage in your starting hand, you're aiming for a starting hand that has a decent number of fireballs, fire blasts, and cannonades. And you should not be, uh, don't be stingy in using those cards. You've got so many of them in the deck, so much strong removal, that if you see a threat on board, you should be eliminating it because you need to minimize the amount that you're being attacked. Uh, the Burning Rage is going to get hit uh, for a lot, or you're going to get hit for a lot of damage by Burning Rage itself, and so you can't afford to be taking too much damage to the face from other cards. You need to maintain board presence, and then you're aiming to get your Tortured Orcs activated. Uh, it's, uh, when, it, when it gets going, it's either a spread aggro or spe spread mid-range deck with a lot of removal, and ideally, you're aiming to overwhelm your opponent with number of creatures on board. So yeah, I uh, would not play it on ladder right now. Possibly if there are more, uh, more rage action cards added uh, in the next upcoming balance patch or in the next expansion, it could be worthwhile to play on ladder. But as it's set up at the moment, I would not take it there. Uh, as we wait for a game here, looking for a friendly one, uh, I'd say other things to consider uh, in terms of cards that might work. There was some uh, chat in the Twitch stream about Black Market. I have played the deck with Black Market. Black Market can give you some value, but in general, if you play Black Market, you're going to end up with more cards than you know what to do with. And, uh, and that's not a bad thing, but you're taking two damage every single time. And I found myself in a decent number of games where I was taking a whole bunch of damage, had a whole bunch of cards, and didn't have, and had fallen behind on board presence. In general, if you're going to hit Burning Rage, you want to hit something that's going to either build your board or, uh, or mitigate your opponent's board. You don't want to end up in a situation where you're, uh, 
where you're building or where you're just drawing cards and taking damage. And you'll end up doing that if you play too much black market in the deck. Uh, other things that I tried to fiddle around with, I tried fitting the apocalypse in there. I don't think there is a way to make it work. You'll end up dying before your opponent. The idea was if you can build a big board of tortured orcs, you can use the apocalypse to activate them, uh, mitigate the damage that you take, and then your opponent's in trouble. I just could never get it to work, but if someone else out there could get it to work, that'd be fun. All right, so we got Kayanu here. This is usually a good matchup. What we don't have in our hand is Burning Rage. So we're gonna draw again and hope we hit it. Uh, and we did not. So this is gonna be a little bit tougher not having Burning Rage in hand. But we do have a two drop, a three drop, and a couple four drop options. Um, and looks like he's not playing an early card. I'm gonna spark out one of the uh, Goblin Fireworkers here because I've got two of them. And I want to get some board presence. Again, like this deck is in trouble if we don't have board presence. So we'll see what we can do. Uh, it looks like, I guess this is a standard Grand Reunion list, but we don't really have much evidence. Like there's the, there's the wisdom in the New Horizons. We're probably playing against Grand Reunion. And in this situation, I would say this is a fairly favorable matchup in the event that uh, we're able to get Burning Rage on board and maintain board presence. Like Kayanu Grand Reunion is just a little bit slow if uh, we're able to consistently hit it with creatures and if we're able to consistently hit it with removal spells. Right now though, we don't have a ton in our hand. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this works out. If he hero powers here, which he might, um, then I think we've got a choice to make about whether we want to put the Gibo and Roni on the field or if we want to hero power ourselves. I think we would probably hero power ourselves because I'm concerned about swift chickens decimating the Gibos and Ronis. Yeah, so ooh, now we've got a forced labor as well. So I think the play in here is going to be go face, hit for four, um, we'll go up a Dominion level. Normally I'd want to draw when I don't have Burning Rage yet, but we'll go up the Dominion level, Hero Power, uh, get a Raven on the field. Next turn we can either Cannonade if he doesn't put anything else out there with his Library Guards. He, ooh, we know he has a Flash Freeze now. Um, yeah, we can either Cannonade if he doesn't put anything else out with his Library Guards. We might have some Chickens coming here. Yep, there they are, the Swift Chickens. Um, yeah, we'll trade off the Fireworker here. We can put the Tortured Orc on field, hit it with Champion of Revolt after. All right, so we know that he is holding a Flash Freeze. Let's go up a level and see what we draw. All right, so we got two Champions of the Revolt. We've got Cannonade. And we've got Forced Labor. So I think the decision here is do we go forced labor, which isn't activated and he can pick off with his chickens, or do we go cannonade, put the target emblem on the library guards, and then he's got to decide. He can either lose the chicken and keep the library guards, but it's shocked, or he can kill the library guards altogether. As I said, we really want to go up in terms of board presence, so that's what I'm going to do. We're going to cannonade the library guards, and let's see what he decides here. If I were him, I would keep the chicken, um, because I know that this deck has a lot of, uh, of two-speed, low-life creatures. But I'm not sure if he knows what we're playing exactly. There's no reason for him to think this isn't a standard uh, Coronis Implants deck. All right, now we're going to go face. So this isn't a great position for us. He's going to pick off our Fireworker here if he wants to. He can Hero Power again. He's getting pretty close to putting Grand Reunion on the field. And we still haven't hit one of our four Burning Rages, which is really what we need to hit to make this deck go. Uh, he's going to clear our board completely. All right, what we're probably going to do next is, depending on what we draw, we're going to try to tutor 
for uh, the weakness hero power here so that we can kill that chicken. Ooh, we hit Burning Rage. All right, so as soon as you get Burning Rage in this deck, um, it, it's the central part of the deck, really, no matter what's going on. And this is a deck with a little bit of variability. We're going to put it on field. It gives us the advantage of we can see what card is coming next. And this is interesting. So if I draw this, the Blood Frenzy there. If I draw it, I don't know what comes next, and whatever I play, I'm going to lose. So I'm actually not going to play anything for mana right now, I'm, which is a little bit unconventional, but this deck is a little unconventional. We're going to put the Lizard Barbarian on the field. We're going to take the two damage. We're going to do one to the Lizard Barbarian, and he has to lose his chicken. This is an example of how this deck plays a little bit unconventionally. I'm not convinced that was the right play, particularly knowing he had that flash freeze. But um, you want to be able to manipulate your top card with your choice to draw or not draw, your choice to tutor or not tutor with your Champion of the Revolt and your Divine Offering. All right, so now what we're looking for is, is that a card that we want to draw? Do I want to draw a, uh, a Lizard Barbarian? I'm actually pretty okay with that right now because a Lizard Barbarian is a one drop and I got a bunch of three drops. So we're going to bring that on board. Uh, we're going to tutor away one of the champions of the Revolt because, or Divine Offer because we don't need them both. And then we hit, again, a Blood Frenzy here. Now that card, if I have cards on board, it's mandatory for me to play it. So I'm going to play Force Labor. I'm going to play my Lizard Barbarian. We're going to be forced to play the, the uh, Blood Frenzy. It's not ideal. I'd rather have it in hand, but we're going to clear his board again. Now we've got a big old Treant here. Normally, Treant is really bad news for Rage, but since we're playing a Rage spread deck and we're also playing a deck with so much removal, uh, I'm actually not super, super concerned about that Treant. Uh, we should be able to trade it off. Like next turn, I ought to be able to uh, to play Champion of the Revolt. Um, mm, yeah, I can play Champion next turn, or I can Fireball. Hmm. Or we have another Tortured Orcs here. So this is where it gets fun. We got a lot of options at this point. Um, I think that we're going to draw that Tortured Orc because we need to get the mana. We want to go up. Um, and I am going to tutor away, or sorry, Divine Offer away a Gibo and Roni. And let's see what we pull up on top of the deck. Another champion. Okay. So here I can play... Let's think. I probably want to activate this crew, or do I? I might want to get forced labor on the field here, go really, really wide, because he's only at 10 health. He knows that that uh, champion of the revolt is coming. So I'm going to go forced labor. I'm going to hero power, and, uh, and we are going to pass and see what happens here. He's going to flash freeze. OK, that's fine. If I were him, I'd be saving that for the Champions of the Revolt because uh, they're much more dangerous than the Soul Ravens. All right. This, I think, is a mistake unless he's able to put a lot of cards on board. Um, I would have used the Library Guards to kill one of these because this is a lot of threats. We also have Fireball in hand. Next turn, we can activate all of those Orcs and we can fireball, and he didn't play anything. So unless he's got a whole bunch of answers in his hand right now, I think we just hit lethal. Let's find out if we did. It's one thing about playing Champion of the Revolt, it's gonna reshuffle your deck, so you wanna hold your Divine Offering until afterwards. Yep, there's lethal. All right, so that's a pretty typical game uh, in the event that you don't hit Burning Rage right off the top. You're usually aiming to win sometime around turn six, turn seven, turn eight. If the game goes much longer than that, you're likely to be in trouble. Uh, you're 
this again is not a deck I would play on ladder because you're likely to run into Cataclysm. You're likely to run into Advanced Zash. Um, both and even, yeah, those are the two main ones. They'll put you in bad shape. But yeah, that's the Burning Rage list that I uh, I played to surprisingly even to me win Masters and. Uh, Hopefully it's useful for you all. If you do want to try it out on ladder, uh, please hit me up. Let me know how it goes for you. Bye.